G'day mates and welcome to Chapel Down Under. Oh, I hope you guys have a fantastic other week. Okay, so right now everybody just stand up, stand up on your feet, on your feet. Alrighty, and now I want everybody to just walk around and I'm going to give you all 20 seconds to give somebody a high five and say you are awesome. All right, all right, mate. So come on, everybody, stand it up. Here, three, two, one, and go. All right, walk around, walk around. High five, you are awesome. High five. Oh, mate, you are awesome. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, strike a light, you are awesome. Ha <laughs> ha. There they go, you are awesome too. High five there. Three, two, one. All right, everybody, sitting down, sitting down, sitting down. Okay. You in the back. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, this is going to be an exciting chapel today. Oh, right now, I'm going to hand it over to you. Hey, guys, in chapel today, we'll be looking at patience. And at the end of chapel, we'll be having a activity. So get active and get involved. In every classroom, there'll be a mailbox. So you can write letters to Pastor Jay and he will write some back. Happy birthday to all these people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ah, and our Bible verse for the term is... Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Job is a righteous man. He does what's right, and God has blessed him. He has 10 kids, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pair of oxen, donkeys, servants, you name it, he's got it. He loves God and follows God's rules. Then suddenly we find ourselves at a meeting called by God. In heaven? It doesn't say, maybe. But guess who shows up at the meeting? Abraham Lincoln? Nope, Satan. And God says, look at Job. He respects me and does what's right. And Satan says, he only respects you because you've blessed him. Take away his stuff and he'll curse you to your face. Scene change back to Job. A bunch of bandits come and take all the oxen and donkeys. Then fire comes from the sky and burns up all the sheep. Then more bandits come and take the camels. Then a windstorm knocks down the house where his kids were, and they all die. Oh no, what did he do? Well, he was really sad. He ripped his robes and sat down in the dirt. But then he said, the Lord gave me all that stuff, and he can take it away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. That's quite an impressive response. Yes, it is. Job was going to respect God no matter what. Scene change. Another meeting in heaven or wherever. Satan says, okay, but he's still healthy. Take away his good health and then he'll curse you to your face. So back to Job, who suddenly finds himself covered with sores from head to foot. They really hurt, and Job is miserable. Job's wife comes by, takes one look at him, and says, You should just curse God and die. That's not a very nice thing to say to your husband. Curse God and die? No, it wasn't. It looks like the accuser is right, that we only respect God when he gives us what we want. But Job says his wife is speaking foolishly, and he won't curse God. Then three friends show up who've heard about Job's terrible state. They sit quietly with him for seven days. Then they start talking. Obviously, these terrible things have happened to you because you've done something terrible. Tell us what you've done. But Job says, I've been good. I've been following God. 
and the friends get a little cranky and say bad things are punishment. If you want your stuff back, you need to stop being bad. And Job gets a little cranky and says, I told you I've been good. I don't know why God let these bad things happen to me. And Job's friends get even more cranky and say, not only have you done terrible things, but you are proud and won't admit it. You deserve all these terrible things. And Job gets mad and says, you are terrible friends saying I've done terrible things. God, why don't you defend me? It's not fair. And as they're arguing, a whirlwind shows up. What's a whirlwind? It's like a small tornado. Oh, interesting. And a voice comes out of the whirlwind, and the voice belongs to... Abraham Lincoln. What's the thing with Abraham Lincoln today? Best president we ever had. Sorry for the interruption. The voice belongs to God. Does he explain why everything bad happened? About the meetings in heaven? Or wherever? No, he doesn't. He says, who's asking questions about whether I'm doing the right thing or not? Like I have no wisdom? Like I don't know about justice? I created the world. I control the seas. I rule over all of creation with wisdom that you cannot always understand. Do you know everything that's going on right now to say that I'm being unfair? What did Job do? He put his hand over his mouth. He knew he had spoken of things he did not understand. He realized that God was just and wise and could be trusted even when bad things happened. Then God turned to the so-called friends and told them they were wrong. Terrible things happening to Job did not mean Job had done terrible things. There's more going on than we can see. And God restored Job's health and gave him more kids and more camels, sheep, oxen, and donkeys than he'd ever had before. And Job kept on trusting God and being faithful to him, even when life was hard to understand. Good eye, mate. How are you beauties going? Today we're doing the Sacred Slam! You beauties ready? In three, two, one, go! You beauties got that one? Let's have a two more goes. Three, two, one, go! Maybe one more time, beauties. Come on, mate. Three, two, one. Come on, mate. You guys gotta have that one. If you don't have it, you ain't got it. Mate. Mate. All right. All right, mateys. So now, everybody, you should get a piece of paper. All right, make sure you have a piece of paper in front of you because this is the activity. The activity is you are going to copy me in making a paper plane. All right, no, 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 just wait, just wait. You can't make any other paper plane. You can't rush ahead and you can't fall behind. You need to follow me and teachers, teachers listening, all right? Teachers listening. You cannot help the students. You have to let them work it out. Ha <laughs> ha, all right? So follow along, here we go. So let's begin. You got your paper lined up like this, all right? You wanna turn it to the side like this. <laughs> Grab the two ends of the, of the paper and fold it like this. Line up the corners. Oop. Line up the corners. Fold it in half. Okay. All right, now you're gonna grab one end down like this, down to the bottom here. Okay, like that, and fold that there. All right, and then you want to 
turn it over like this. And I want you to fold that side down like this. All right. Okay, now I want you to open it up like this. Make sure that that is pointing to, to the front. All right, and then go to fold this down all the way to the bottom like this. Okay, and then Hold the middle, all right, bring this corner down to the middle, right there, okay, should look like that, okay, and then get this one down to the middle, like that, okay. All right, now you get this one. Folding up. Okay, like that. Okay. Then you gotta turn it around and flip it over like this. Then you're gonna bring this part all the way up like this make sure all the corners are nice and sharp okay should look like that now this part is the tough part okay so you want to bring this side down to here okay so you want to bring it like this Okay, like that. Flip it over. And that side, down here. Okay, and that is your paper plane. All right, if you didn't get it, don't be discouraged, okay? If you rush through it, Oh, how good was your patience? If you're upset, we need to learn to be patient. But you can release your anger after chapel with the airplane. Woo! Good day, mates. Welcome to Bye Bye Bingo. You have 10 seconds to prepare your needs for Bible Bingo. It's time for the reveal of our first bingo card. Oh, I can't wait to see what it is. It's gonna be... Ooh! It is... Pharaoh! Let's just say this guy was a bad man. Our next card is gonna be... Ooh, I can't wait to see what it is. It's a goat from Noah's Ark. Our next card is... Oh, it's Jesus and a lamb. Our next card... Ooh, this guy looks sick. It's the guy from the Good Samaritan. Next card... from when Jesus died. Our next card. King Saul. He tried to kill David. He was also a bad man. Our lucky last card. Ooh, I can't wait to see what it is. The last card is Pilate. He let everyone kill Jesus. 
That's all for today, folks. I'm going to head it over to Sue. The ocean is home to some of the most diverse and beautiful creatures, all moving in their own rhythm and pace. And dancing through the waves are the acrobats, court jesters, and aerial spinners of the sea. Dolphins. Today, I get to go behind the scenes at the Dolphin Discovery Exhibit in the National Aquarium. I'm meeting up with Susie Walker and her team to check out the dolphin's daily routine. A typical day starts at 6.30 in the morning with breakfast. It takes the team two hours to sort and weigh 200 pounds of fish that make up the dolphin's diet. Prepping today's fish. They are fed every hour and a half about seven to 10 times a day. In addition to their diet, food is an important part of their learning through positive reinforcement. The trainers use food in a series of play and reward sessions to teach certain behaviors and build trust with the dolphins. Susie, can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at the aquarium? Sure, I am a trainer, so that means that I help take care of our animals. Another part of it is teaching them behaviors that help us take care of them, monitor their physical health. So okay. we, can, we can collect samples of blood or other things. Can you give me a little history on the dolphins that you have here? Sure, we have seven dolphins. Five of them are girls and two of them are boys. And all of them except one were born here okay. at Dolphin Discovery. One of them was born at another aquarium and we provided a new home for her when she needed a new home. So okay. all of these guys were born in, in human care. Let's head to the first training session of the day with Taylor. Every morning we do these visual checks on them. Just to make sure everything's looking nice and healthy. We'll ask yeah. them to take a nice deep breath for us. <gasps> there mm. it is. Do they keep that blowhole closed while they're underwater? Yes. So a lot of times people think that the dolphins are breathing water. What they're seeing is that water that's sitting on top moving out of the, yeah. of the air. But they breathe there just like you and I do. I <laughs> love marine mammals. They're my favorite. Cetaceans, yeah. whales, porpoises, and dolphins. So right now Chesapeake is our oldest dolphin and she's 25 years old. She knows a lot of fun sounds. <laughs> And she's our only dolphin that will blow a raspberry. Oh, what's that? So it's like a, well, we'll have her show you. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! So I see they have a lot of teeth. Do they use them? They actually use their teeth to catch the fish that they eat. When they close their teeth, their teeth interlock kind of like a zipper. Okay. And that traps the fish. But oh, okay. If you notice if she's eating, they swallow their food whole. Dolphins learn by imitating their trainer's behaviors and gestures. And like dogs, they're always ready for a treat. Most of our water work is mimicry related and it's all based on relationship building. What do you mean by mimicry related? So we can do some mimics with her. You wanna stand up? Okay. We'll spin in a circle one time and okay. she'll follow us. So okay. Oh. So dolphins learn very quickly by mimicking each other as well as us. Um, so when we do a behavior very small like that, they're like, oh, hey, I can do that too, and that's really fun. And that's a great way for us to build a relationship with them and build trust. Okay. You take your right hand, hold them near, and give her a nice big wave. So wave back. <laughs> and then one of our favorites, if you take your hand like this, hopefully she won't get us too wet. Might get a little wet. And then go ahead and slap the ledge. <laughs> She's just very good at copy. Wow. All right, we're gonna take a quick step back. Can you say bye? Bye. Aww. Good job. Good job. Okay. The exhibit opens to the public daily to let them see how dolphins learn, play, and interact with each other. These sessions help educate visitors about dolphins. Now that I've seen them in action, I want to learn even more about their social behavior. 
So some of the social behaviors that you see here, would you see those also in the ocean? Yes, they're very touchy touchy animals and that's kind of how they bond with each yeah. other so they'll rub their flippers along each other's bodies they'll whistle and click to communicate with each other so they're very social with each other correct yes so they like to remain in pods you would say correct yes a typical pod size for a bottlenose dolphin is going to be a few individuals to maybe 20 whereas something like another species called a spinner dolphin it's not unusual to see 100 or 200 of them in a group at a time. So each each species is a little different. And do they work together when they're in pods? Yes, what absolutely. Do they do? Yes, they look out for each other. If they're resting, they don't completely sleep like we do. They okay. sleep with one eye closed. They sleep with one eye closed? That's so funny. And what's interesting is we believe that they sleep with one half of their brain at a time. What? So they're never completely asleep. Why do they do that? If you think about it, when you're out in the ocean and you're kind of looking around, you got to keep your eyes open. You don't want to have both your eyes closed. You could run into something. Yeah. Do they use echolocation in yes. pods? Yes. What is echolocation? Echolocation is a way for them to find their way around if water is either dark or murky. OK. So what they do is they make these clicking sounds. They go out into the water in front of them, and they bounce off things in their path. So the click bounces, and then the dolphin can listen to the echo. So they can kind of see through sound. Wow. So what's a lifelong plan here for your dolphins? Well, currently our plan is to find a brand new home for them. OK. After careful consideration, the National Aquarium has decided to build and relocate their dolphin colony to a more naturalistic seaside sanctuary. And what's going to be neat about this new home is that it will be in an ocean-type habitat. Do dolphins in the wild face any threats right now? Yes, pretty much every ocean animal out there. Our oceans are in trouble, so we are trying to figure out how we can help. We like to share our animals here at Dolphin Discovery with our guests. So we think about our dolphins as ambassadors yeah. for their species. So they are sort of being the voice for their time yeah. out in the ocean. Well, thank you for sharing this experience with You're me. You're welcome. Yes, my pleasure. We learned so much about dolphins today, like they sleep with one eye open, keeping half of their brain running. Dolphins are so important to our marine ecosystem. They provide clues about the health and safety of other ocean creatures, as well as humans. They also see through sound using echolocation, which helps them better navigate through the oceans. And the dolphins that we met here today serve as ambassadors for dolphins all over the world. So please be sure to take care of our oceans. See you next time on What Sam Sees. Hey mates, and we are here tuning in on our nitty gritty. Alright, so we know that we've been learning on patience. Now, what is patience? Patience. You know, is it is it easy or is it hard to be patient? You know, I think there are times when, when we've had to wait in line. Have you ever waited in line for for a roller coaster ride? And you got so many people in front of you, and it's a long line, and you just gotta stand there. And then someone goes on the line, and you're like, hmm. Oh, crikey! Oh, isn't it just frustrating? You just wanna push line? Oh, well, how about times when you're standing there and you wanna eat something, and there's a long line, but you are starving want to get some food in your belly well hey have a look at this line here okay have a look here we're seeing this this long line of people all standing all bunching up bunching up like a a, 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 a flock of sheep all right just you know brushing up on each other not COVID safety at all isn't it <laughs> yeah well, with the line's pretty long. What are they waiting for? Uh, is it is it a new phone that's that's just released? Or oh, or maybe it's a brand new car. Well, let's let's check it out. Oh, fair income, it's still going. All right. Any guesses yet? Well, they're definitely not waiting. 
for the new iPhone, okay, it ends up being McDonald's. How awesome is this? <laughs> They've been waiting for McDonald's. Now, this is the first McDonald's in a place called Moscow, uh, somewhere in Africa or something like that. Well, but it's very, very difficult to be patient. Now, there are some times when we, we are not patient, like we're on the road and we're driving, right? Your mum and dad are driving and, and then suddenly they just, you know, cut enough people and they might be saying some bad words or they might be doing some funny actions that, that isn't, isn't really good for you, okay? Or we could, we could be rushing through our, our, our homework, getting through our homework and, and we just want to play. But then we look at the answers and it's, it's all wrong. Oh no, not passing tests. Or maybe there are times when you know, we just want to rush, rush to the airport. When we're out, out, or rushing to, the, to, to get a bus. Ah, oh, wait, 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 wait. And then we just hurt people along the way. You know, it's like, pa, 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 But, you know, people get hurt. People are getting hurt along the way. You know, there are times when we need to be patient. And patient, it's all about stopping, slowing down, and waiting in the times of trouble. Now, when we look at the story of Job, okay, we see Job, Job, he, he was a godly man. He did nothing wrong. He was a good farmer. He had a lot of family, had a good flock on him, all right? But the thing is, Satan came along and he tries to destroy Job's life. Satan does this. And guess what? Job, he loses his land and he loses his flock of sheep and his flock of cows, uh, his herd of cows, um, and he loses his family. Oh, oh no. no. Job loses his family. And, he, and, and he, then he ends up getting really, really sick. <laughs> and he could have been so angry. He could have went out and hurt people. He could have done so many silly things. But here's what Job did. Job waited. Job was patient. Job was patient. And he waited for God. And God, God blessed Job. And at the end of all of Job's suffering and struggles, he got more flock, more sheep, more cows, more children, more land, more of everything. Oh, fat income. It's, it's, it's quite a large load that he, he got from God. It's fantastic, but he had to be patient. Well, it's kind of like this experiment right here, okay? We're looking here and, uh, yeah, who loves drinking Coca-Cola? All right, I'm not much of a Coke fan. I'm, I'm a, a, a ginger beer kind of person. <laughs> all right, all right, mate. So here we have this experiment right here. And we can see these Coke cans all piling up and we also got a magnet here as well. Now, when you're looking at this, you know, we think, oh, it's nothing great. It's just a magnet and a couple of cans of Coke. But he's got some pennies all lined up. We've got a little bit of change there. And he's managed to kind of stack them all underneath each other. Oh, isn't this crazy? All right. And so, but the thing I want to pay your attention to is this, is that this guy, he had to be very patient very patient he had to be very patient and 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 look at how slowly he had to move these coins from one side to the other and he had to move it slowly because if he moved any quicker oh man fair income it would have all fallen apart but isn't this a great example of what it means to be patient because everything will remain steady will remain together if we're just patient not just with one another but also we need to be patient with God okay all right guys uh, let's uh, wrap it up in a prayer today uh, let's bow our heads 
All right, and let's pray. Hey, God, I just want to thank you for showing us what it means to be patient. Help us to wait for you because we know you will show up. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, champs, that's a wrap for today. Now stay tuned for our activity. All right.